And Mike Turner is the ranking member on the House Intelligence Committee. He also sits on the House Armed Services Committee. Congressman, great to have you with us. Thank you, John. Well, you heard Kilmeny reference it in her story there, but I want to get your reaction to what the press secretary recently said about banning the import of Russian oil. We don't have a strategic interest in reducing the global supply of energy, uh, and that would raise prices at the gas pump for the American people uh, around the world um, because it would reduce the supply available. And it's as simple as less supply raises prices, uh, and that is certainly a big factor for the president uh, in this uh, at this moment. So she's admitting there, I think, Congressman, that there was no strategy behind uh, shutting down the Keystone XL pipeline. They were just doing it out of spite, I guess. Is that what she admitted there? Well, what's clear here is that this administration does not have any strategy. It was interesting to hear her to try to talk about economics as we have raging inflation uh, throughout the country that's caused by the Biden economic um, policies. But but I think Senator Manchin, Senator Murkowski are absolutely right, as is, and I didn't think I'd be saying this on television, as is. Um, I think, uh, Speaker Pelosi, we need to stop the importing uh, of uh, Russian oil. I think there are absolutely veto-proof majorities in both the House and the Senate to accomplish this. Uh, this is about freedom. This is about uh, supporting those who are fighting for self-determination. It's about our allies, and it's about really threats to the United States. Vladimir Putin has openly threatened the United States. We certainly shouldn't be his customer uh, while he threatens us on the world stage. And Congressman, um, speaking of threats here and, and what happens to Putin or what should be done, we need to get your take on another big story happening this Friday. It is Senator Lindsey Graham's call to assassinate Russian President Vladimir Putin. Uh, we want to put this up for our viewers here. Graham tweeted um, after Ukrainian nuclear plant was attacked, is there a Brutus in Russia? Is there a more successful Colonel Stauffenberg in the Russian military? The only way this ends is for somebody in Russia to take this guy out. You would be doing a, your country and the world a great service and tweet there. Uh, after that, Congressman Graham was even on our network, Newsmax, repeating his call for someone in Russia to take out Putin. Are you okay with that type of talk? Well, Senator Graham is certainly a very knowledgeable international, I think, you know, scholar and policymaker. I think these statements are very, very unfortunate. Um, we shouldn't be making statements like this. We wouldn't want people making statements like that in reverse as they affect our country. But I think what's real important here is, is how the senator has been moved by what he's seeing uh, by uh, Putin himself. Uh, killing civilians, bombing their homes, killing young children, um, and, and also then attacking his power plant. You know, they, this shows the fallacy of the Russians saying that they're only attacking military targets. A, a nuclear power plant is not a military target. It was not attacking Russians. Uh, it was not even defending the country. This is a civilian plant that has grave consequences if it uh, should be taken down. To, uh, to pull tanks up and to begin attacking a power plant just shows how reckless, how irresponsible uh, Putin is. And certainly I think you know, that's where people are, are, are rising to uh, mm -hmm. really this anger toward Vladimir Putin. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right, Congressman. Senator Graham has been one of the loudest and most prominent voices on the Senate, uh, Foreign Services or a Foreign Affairs Committee. I mean, he, and you, you think he'd know better, especially given the recent history with Iraq and Libya, Saddam Hussein, Omar Gaddafi, those are not good guys. But what came after them was complete chaos. And, you know, you, you imagine if this were somebody else talking about assassinating an American official. He, he's, he's not one of us. And we all appreciate the emotions here. We hate what Vladimir Putin is doing. But he's an elected senator and a senior one at that. And he should know better. Well, I, I'll leave him to respond to, to, to your statement. I think that, you know, when someone else makes a statement, I think it's up to them to respond to it. I can tell you that I, I certainly don't agree uh, that, uh, that, that that's helpful, but that's certainly up uh, to the senator to, uh, to comment and respond to your concerns about his statement. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, let's, let's also talk about something that former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo recently said uh, while he was in Taiwan. He, he says the U.S. should immediately recognize Taiwan as a free and sovereign mm -hmm. country. Here's the former Secretary of State. On the people and government of the United States should simply accept this fundamentally decent, morally right thing. This is easy. The Taiwanese people deserve the world's respect for continuing down this free, democratic, and sovereign path. You know, as we look at the new kind of picture uh, of these global powers and the, uh, the allegiance between China and Russia, whatever that may be, I mean, shouldn't we be hearing this same type of commentary from our current Secretary of State? 
Well, I, I think what's important here is that, that we need to shift our policies to be able to support those democratic governments that need military support, strengthening as they look to, to adversaries, adversaries who self-declare uh, China and Russia. Uh, Russia uh, declaring itself as an adversary both to uh, Europe and to the United States. You know, it was so sad to hear President Zelensky say it's, it, it's you know, President Biden was too late. Why didn't he send us weapons before Russia got here? Because obviously they're less effective and it's harder to get them in the country. You know, we were calling for this for over a year. It took President Trump to actually send in lethal weapons uh, into Ukraine after the Obama administration refused to. He's the one who sent them the original javelins that we've have seen how effective they are. Uh, we need to make certain that people can defend themselves uh, because obviously uh, aggressiveness from authoritarian regimes are going to continue. Congressman Mike Turner, thank you for your time. Great to see you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. And new this morning, we have.